It's not normal. How can you live like that? I know we're living in the last days and we, we look around us and we say, wow, this is a mess and we don't like it. But if you want that connection with God and you really want God to warn you, admonish you, encourage you, heal you, bless you, whatever the case may be, protect you, then you have to clear the air between you and him. How do you clear the air? You get rid of the clutter that's in your life. And the clutter can be emotional scars, resentment, anger, vengeance, spite. The clutter can be sinful desires that you tinker with and toy with and play with. The clutter can be a foul attitude where you are abusive one minute, sweet the next, and abusive the next. You're like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You don't know who you are or why you are. You just are. And it's a big question mark to you. You give place to the devil when you feel like it, when it's convenient for you. Hmm? You make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust of the flesh thereof. Or you make provisions for sin to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Or you give place to the devil. You give place to wrath. Hmm? You pick up wrath when you need it, and then you lay it down when you don't need it. When God says in his word, forsake wrath. Drop it. Totally. Let it not be in your vocabulary of your words, thought, or emotions. So now we're in the last days. We're dealing with COVID. We're dealing with Oh, man. I mean, we can't even go into all this. My cousin just mentioned today about a brain-eating, uh, I can't think of the word she used, a, 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 whatever. It's some, um, it's some type of a little creature that's, that's up there in the brain eating, and people are, are dying from it in Mexico. I mean, we don't know what's coming next. Here's my point. The only way you're going to be in the secret place of the Most High God, because see, God doesn't cohabit with sin. The only way you're going to be in the secret place of the Most High God, under the shadow of the Almighty, as if you fight to get rid of the clutter in your life. All the clutter. That means you must be willing to leave the internet porn alone. You must be willing to not go to the dance halls. You must be willing to not date. Oh my God, did she say don't date? What am I gonna do? Oh, I can't be without a man. I can't be, or oh, some of you men, I can't be without a woman. I mean, you just, Oh, no, 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 no. I got to leave this channel. No, this woman's talking out the side of her neck. She must be crazy. Or like in the uh, character that I played on one of the video skits. See, I'm not, I'm not one of those kind of ladies can be alone. Oh, no, I can't be by myself. No, but I got to have me a man. A man got to be in my bed every night. I don't care who he is. He got to be in my bed every night. I'm sorry. I... No, honey, I'm, I'm not one of those kind of people that, that can live like a spinster. That is, it's not normal. It's not normal. How can you live like that? I mean, you got all this and you ain't got nobody to share it with? That's crazy. How can you live like that? Don't you feel weird? I mean, you're not, you know, what's up? Mm. Well, anyways, I'm sorry. That's not happening here. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live it up. <laughs> What's not normal to the world is a blessing to God. And it will bring you blessings. But see, you have to decide what do you believe. 
So here we are in the last days. You want to be under the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. But you're not willing, like Abraham was, to kill your son. And you're saying, huh? I know she's talking crazy now. No. God told Abraham to kill his son. What does your son represent? Is it your love life? Is it your money? Is it your looks? Hmm? What does your love life represent? Your anger, your resentments, the list of all the injustices that have been done to you and all your rights to be angry and bitter. Hmm. Like I said, you have to be willing to get rid of the clutter. If you really want to open up the signal, the wave, to hear God's voice, the airwaves, when there's too much clutter in the airwaves, you get static on top of static on top of static. You hear me? So you have to decide what you are going to do. See, God's not going to sit you down and say, just sit there and I'll clean you up. He'll give you the soap. He'll give you the sponge or the washcloth. He'll even supply the water and the tub. But you must get in the tub and wash yourself. Are you willing to do what it takes to get squeaky clean, as I used to tease my husband with? Get you squeaky clean. Or do you want to make excuses so that you can continue making provisions for the flesh? Because you got needs, baby. Huh? How bad do you want holiness? What prices are you willing to pay for it? What are you willing to give up, cast down, tear down, destroy, uproot? What are you willing to go through to get to the level of holiness that gets you into God's presence? That ushers you into the inner sanctum of the Lord's love, of the Lord's glory. Everybody wants to experience God, but nobody wants to pay the price. Now, Jesus paid it all for our salvation. But there's a price for us to pay to experience God. Are you willing? Do you want him bad enough? Or are you just in this thing so you won't go to hell? That's the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. I don't want to get my butt whooped. I don't want to get that ticket. I don't want that judgment against me. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to be in there too long. Doesn't mean you're sorry for what you did. You hear what I'm saying? Because when you're really sorry, I'm going to share this story with you. Thank you, Lord. I was telling this let, uh, this week to somebody. Here's a perfect example of godly sorrow. I was dating a guy who was from Atlanta, Georgia. And he was wild. He was out there, but he had a golden heart, a real sweet heart. He had a temper that was cuckoo. And I remember, and he was lustful for days. Every time he turned around, he wanted to jump in the sack. And I'm looking at him, and I'm, I'm teasing him. I'm saying, you ain't no Christian. He used to say he was a born-again Christian. I said, like, you ain't no Christian. You phony like the rest of them. And he couldn't understand why I kept saying it. And when I kept telling him, why do you always want to have sex with me? Listen to this. Why do you always want to have sex with me? When you know it's a sin to commit fornication. He told me, 
oh, that's not what fornication meant. I was like, are you that ignorant? I couldn't believe he didn't know what it meant. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, right. So after a while, we started having these knockdown, drag out debates. And I finally said, you have a pastor. You go to your pastor. If you really want to serve God, do what it takes to get the information. Go to your pastor and see what he says. Remember, I was not walking with God at all. I was a bona fide sinner, y'all. He went to the pastor. He came back. That man was apologizing to me left and right. He said, that ain't happening no more. I didn't realize that's what that was. No, that's not happening. Do you know I tried to seduce the man? I did everything I could think of. He would not let me touch him. He did what Joseph did. He ran out of my house. And then from across the street, he said, you call me when you want to get married because I want to marry you. And I was like, I don't want to marry you. He was just a plaything for me. But it was nice that he wanted to marry me and that he was serious. That right there changed my opinion of him. Because once he knew what it really meant, he wouldn't go anywhere near it. There was no kissing. There was no touching. There was no nothing. That man meant business. And I never saw him again. He would call me and ask me if I still wanted to get married. But he would not come near me. That's godly sorrow. Ain't nobody had to beat him upside the head. Once he got the point, boom, instant change. Just like that. That was one Christian I respected once I realized he was doing the opposite because he really didn't know what it meant. But once he got the true meaning, he lined up with it immediately. How many of you are willing to line up immediately? Because, see, in some areas, we do have godly sorrow. But unfortunately, in many areas, we don't. And I ask you, if you know you have areas in your life, it really doesn't bother you. You just, you got the can help it, and you feel like God ought to understand. That's not the way God operates. You need to ask God to put godly sorrow. Tell him, I don't even care about it. I don't even, be honest with him. I don't, I don't think that's all of a big deal. But if that's a big deal to you, make it a big deal to me. You got to pray those kind of prayers. God will make the adjustment in your heart if you ask. If you really want to line up with his ways. Then, when you're going through COVID and when you're going through all these other crazy things, financial crisis, all these things that break down and fall apart in your life, you won't be at your wit's end because you will know in whom you believe. Why do you know in whom you believe? God rewards those that sacrificially obey him. And going through all of this mess that we're going through is much easier on your emotions, much easier on your psyche, much easier on your nerves when you have God in the center. Because the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on him. Amen? Keep your mind stayed on him and watch how things change when it really becomes important to you. You don't have the fear of the Lord as God to give it to you. God bless you. Amen.